Our second round of Inside Oswego Speedway for the 2014 season is up and ready to go. We've got a triple header of action to bring you this week, including the Race of Champions Asphalt Modified Series and the Richie Evans Memorial 75 lap main event. Want to remind everyone the coverage on Inside Oswego Speedway this week is a tad abbreviated due to the Speedsport TV and MAV TV national television coverage that was at the Speedway on Saturday night. In the ROC Modified Main, Eric Rudolph in the number 51 and Patrick Emmerling in the 07 machine would lead the field to green, but everybody knew early on the show was going to be further on back in the pack with the 60 of Matt Hirschman and the 22 of Chuck Haasfeld. They had finished 1-2 in each one of the ROC Modified Mains to begin the season. Rudolph was out in front, but you can see right there to the right side of the screen, he would slow out of corner number two early on and have to head to pit lane. And that would put the 07 of Emmerling up there on the pole position, battling out in front, but right away slipping into that runner-up spot past Andy Jankowiak and Tyler Ripkema was the 60 of Hirschman, beginning to make his charge through the field as Chuck Hosfeld follows through as well. Caution lights would wave one more time. The 10 machine of Daryl Lewis would find the foam out in corner number two. And on that restart, Hirschman would blast out in front in the number 60 machine looking for his third consecutive ROC modified win to start the season as Hosfeld battles to the high side of the 73X of Andy Jankowiak coming out of corner number two and down the back straightaway. Hosfeld started just a touch further back in the field, now trying to chase Hirschman down. As Hosfeld now closes in on the back bumper of Amberling out of that second corner, pulls to the inside and makes the move stick into corner number three. Hosfeld now into second, but would he have enough time to chase down Hirschman out in front? He would draw to the back bumper, but one once again, it would be Matt Hirschman out in front, collecting the ROC modified win and a second consecutive Richie Evans Memorial Championship at Oswego Speedway. Hirschman would grace Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane. He would also talk to Derek Pernasiglio of Speedsport TV and Mav TV. As Hirschman sits in victory lane, Chuck Hosfeld finished in second ahead of Emmerling. Jan Kowiak, Tyler Ripkema would round out the top five. Darren Shearer in sixth, Austin Kokinash in seventh, Mike Leedy in eighth, Jimmy Zacharias ninth, and Brian DeFabo would round out the top ten. We'll be back with Small Block Super Modified Highlights right after this. New York State's fastest action is back for the month of May. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, May 31st, it's the return of the Spring Championship. Presented by Best Western Plus, Quality Inn and Suites, and You Pull, You Save Auto Parts. It's the fastest field of novellas Super Modifieds in history. Featuring wing sprint car veteran Jessica Zim. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Oswego Speedway Spring Championship. Saturday, May 31st, kids 16 and under free. The next main event on the docket Saturday night would be the 35-lap Tony White Memorial presented by RJ Caruso Tax and Accounting at a and Auto Parts, and it would be Alex Hogue in the 7 and Dalton Doyle in the 01 starting up there in row number one. But caution lights and then the red flag would come out right off the start as a parking lot would ensue in corner number two after Hogue and Doyle made contact. The entire track would then become blocked, nowhere for anybody to go, bringing out the red lights as you get another look here at the replay. A couple cars managing to make their way through the pack, but the majority would either get into the inside hub rail or have to stop entirely to avoid contact as we get another slow-mo look at the incident here between corners number one and two. When the restart order would be reshuffled, quite a few cars would have to go to pit lane to make repairs, and as a result, that would put the five of Tim Garou out in front, the eight of Josh Kerr in second, and Mike Bond and Andrew Shartner, who started deep in the field, would actually restart third and fourth without even passing a car on the speedway, but obviously they would not stay there long. They pulled to the low side of Kerr going into corner number three to move up into second and third and now begin to give chase at Guru for the lead but Shartner in the 18 he would tuck to the low side of Bond in the corner number one to take the runner-up spot and now would draw the beat on the five of Guru down the back stretch and into corner number three well just one lap later Shartner would next pull to the low side out of corner number four the same move yet again diving into corner number one late the two cars come together Guru is able to continue on no yellow lights on the speedway Shartner the new leader Bond into the runner-up spot. 
and Mike would draw quickly onto the back of the 18 as they come out of corner number two, but yellow lights would come on one more time for a hard accident in corner number three, involving the 54 of Camden Proud and the 44 of Zach Amo. As you get a look at the replay, you see the 54 of Proud come sliding into the screen, and Amo, with nowhere to go, locks up the brakes and slides into Proud with tremendous force out there into the third corner. Both drivers would be okay. Race car is obviously done for the evening. On the restart with Shartner and Bond continuing to run away out in front of Tim Daru and the 04 of Craig Harreth, Jack Patrick would be on the move. And the Longley brother Dodge, number nine, as he works to the low side of the 47 of John Tessarario. But unfortunately, just a few laps later, Patrick would pull out of the event with a broken rear end in the nine machine. And out in front, Shartner and Bond continuing to pull away from the field, but it would be all the 18. The Jet, Andrew Shartner and the Crow Motorsports machine would pull out to the Tony White Memorial victory, claiming his second consecutive win of the 2014 season over Bond, Guru, Harith, and Josh Kerr in the top five positions. As Andrew Shartner pulls down to greet Father Carl in Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane, he would speak with Keith Zare. This is this is one thing I haven't done. This is the one big money race I haven't won. And this is the first time I've passed Mike Bond for a win. So Mike Bond's one heck of a driver. And uh, to be able to do that, that is what made this the most exciting. I think that was better than the win itself. Yeah, I think so. I bent the toe up there in that first wreck. The car was loose after that. I don't, I don't know how they can start somebody that never raced here on a pole, but I guess that in my call. But we'll take second. The car was a little beat up. You know, just want to thank Denise for giving me a great ride. My wife, my crew guys, sponsors, Mays, Premier Landscaping, Marsh Pizzeria, Millennium Music, and Swiggle Auto. I just want to thank tonight's sponsors and everybody for showing up tonight. Yeah, uh, third's okay. Uh, this will take it for, you know, I was off a few years and stuff and getting back into it, but uh, I don't know. I just uh, I think I got dove in a little hard on there going into one and. That's racing. I guess you gotta drive a little hard in these this class. They like the supers where you got a lot of power and you can just use your, you know, you don't have to make stupid moves in supers, but that's the way it goes. Andrew Shartner continues to lead the SBS series standings over Mike Bond, Jack Patrick, Craig Harris, and Barry Kingsley in the top five. New York State's fastest action is back for the month of May. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, May 31st, it's the return of the Spring Championship. Presented by Best Western Plus, Quality Inn and Suites, and You Pull, You Save Auto Parts. It's the fastest field of novellas Super Modifieds in history. Featuring wing sprint car veteran Jessica Zim. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Oswego Speedway Spring Championship. Saturday, May 31st, kids 16 and under, free. And the highlight of the triple header Memorial Day weekend special, the Jim Champagne Memorial 75 lap main event would see Jessica Zemkin and Tim Devendorf up there on row number one. And Zemkin would blast out into the early race lead after picking up her qualifying heat race victory earlier in the night, becoming the first woman driver to win a non-wing Novella Super Modified heat race at Oswego Speedway. With Zemkin, Ritzkis, and Gozik out front, Dave Gruel in the number 50 machine who actually backed into the foam earlier in the night. Night, rebounded and was on the move despite nearly clocking the foam one more time going in the corner number one but that would not derail Gruel as he used the top side of the speedway masterfully in the first dozen laps of this event pulling first to the outside of the double O of Joe Gosick. Next coming out of four it would be the top side of the 37 of Randy Ritz gets to pull into the runner-up spot and not much longer after that Gruel would once again find the outside of the racetrack to battle early race leader Zemkin out of corner number four as they cross the strike. Your new race leader, the 50 of Dave Gruel, looking to go wreckers to checkers on Saturday at Oswego Speedway as Randy Ritzkis follows suit on the top side in the 37. Zemkin would slide back a little bit further here as Bob Bond in the 47 and the 7 of Otto Sitterly begin to work their way through the field. Bond first works to the low side of Gosick out of corner number two. Next would pull to the low side of Zemkin out of corner number four. Bond working up into position number four, down into corner number one. Gosick would try to make the low side move as well, but couldn't quite make it stick as Sitterly now pulls to the inside. In one fell swoop, working to the inside of Gosick and the 11. 
of Zemkin here into corner number one. Sitterly trying to keep pace with Bond as he continues to work his way out through the field. Sitterly to the outside of the 44 of Bobby Haynes as the field checks into corner number three. Dave Danzer keep an eye on the 52 on the top side of the 22 of Pat Lavery and Danzer catches the bump on the outside of the speedway, loses control and tags the steal in during corner number one in the Danzer Racing number 52 as you get a look at the replay. Danzer would be okay, your May 10th feature winner, but he was obviously done for the evening in the 52. On the restart, Gruel would continue on out in front, Ritzkis running in second, Bond is third, Sitterly fourth, Gosick fifth, but the double zero would swap ends going into corner number one, sending Gosick back to the tail side of the field. So Double O Joe would have to work even harder now to try to pick up his first career Jim Champagne Memorial victory. As the green lights came back on, Bond and Sitterly continued their march through the field. As Bond works to the low side of Ritzkis, Sitterly would look to do the same in the seven as they both try to chase down the 50 of Dave Gruel. Trying to work the low side, Sitterly would eventually have to go to the high side on Ritzkis to take position number three to the top out of corner number four, and the race would now be on. Gruel, Bond, and Sitterly out in front, and it wouldn't take long for the three to close into lap traffic. Sitterly tries to shoot to the high side into corner number three, but would have to tuck it back in the line. Gruel now trying to work the high side. Bond pulls down to the low side. It was an amazing three-car battle between these drivers for about three or four laps as Bond looked to be the new race leader, but then Gruel would cruise back one more time on the high side. Dave Gruel hanging on to the lead in the u pull u -save Auto Parts number 50 with Bond riding in second. Sitterly still lurking back there in position at number three, but Bond in the 47 and you can see him start to wiggle that car back and forth. Bond would run out of fuel in the number 47 car. He would start to lose pace and eventually would head pit side, leaving the battle up front between Gruel and Sitterly. With about six laps to go, Sitterly would try the low side down into corner number three. He would make it work as they close on the lap car, the 44 of Bobby Haynes. Sitterly would be your new race leader at lap number 69 of 75. But a caution flag later on would turn into a red flag as we hit the 45 caution lap mark, which requires cars to refuel as Sitterly gets the tank refilled to the back side of the number seven machine. And on the restart in this one, Sitterly would leap out in front and pull away. His sixth Jim Champagne Memorial victory at Oswego Speedway, Sitterly is the winner. Gruel came home in second. Dave Schulich Jr. from 23rd all the way up to third. Cody Graham, his first race of the season took home the number four spot with Jessica Zemkin rounding out the top five as Otto Sitterly climbs out from the car and turning stone resort casino victory lane you'll see his full interview on National Speed Sport News TV and MAV TV on July 3rd at 8 p.m. Sitterly continues his lead in the standings over Bob Bond, Gruel, David Danzer, and Jeff Abold in the top five. Remember, as we just said, you can catch all the action from the Jim Champagne Memorial 75 on MAV TV Thursday, July 3rd at 8 p.m. Be sure to call your local provider to be sure that you get that channel. Thanks again for tuning in to Inside Oswego Speedway.